Hello, everybody. How are you all? So that's my accounting short number four and my 51st video um, in general. Um, in this short, as I said in my previous short, I'm going to discuss some accounting concepts and conventions. So I'm not going to distinguish between conventions and concepts. So we are going to treat everything the same. So it's accounting concepts. So for doing that, let me share my screen. And I'll put it on slide show as well. That's accounting shots. Accounting concepts. Now, what are accounting concepts? Now, when you're talking about accounting concepts, these are the rules, assumptions, and conditions that defines the parameters and constraints within which accounting operates. So these are basically the rules which you have to follow when you do the accounting. So that's the meaning of accounting concepts. And as I said, we are going to include some conventions as well. So that's accounting concepts and conventions. So some rules which you have to follow uh, when you do the accounting. The first one is historical cost concept. Now, historical cost concept basically means when you are going to record something, I mean, when you, we are, when you are going to record an asset in your financial statements, you are going to record it at the price you have paid for it. So that's your cost. The cost you have incurred for that asset, we're going to record it at that particular price. Now that makes sense as well, because if I have paid, for example, 1 million pounds, to purchase a building in central London, I must record the value of that building is actually 1 million pounds. So I must record that building in my statement of financial position at 1 million pounds. So we must record our assets at their original cost. Over the time, obviously we know that the, the value of the assets are going to change. So the building which I have bought today, over time it will increase in value, but historical cost concept will not take into account those changing prices. And for that, we have got uh, separate rules how to deal with the, those changing prices. But according to historical cost concept, do not take into account any changing prices and record your asset in your financial statements at the price you have paid for it. So that's historical cost. So that's the first one. The next one is known as accruals concept or matching concept. Now I touched briefly on this concept when I was explaining you last week, uh, the meaning of um, accruals and prepayments. Now this concept is also known as the matching concept. According to this concept, you must match the expenses to the revenue they have generated. So even if you have not paid them as of yet, you must match those expenses with the revenue you have generated. So for example, electricity bill, if you pay electricity bill in arrears, so if you are going to pay uh, like after three months, but when you are going to account for the profit of those three months, you must take into account the electricity you have consumed within those three months. So you have to account for all the revenue and you must account for all the expenses you have been incurring to earn that revenue. And that's no, known as matching concept. Match the revenue with the expenses. And because of that, we need to take into account outstanding expenses or accrued expenses or prepaid expenses. So that's your accruals concept or matching concept. The next one is the business entity concept. Now business entity concept is known as separate entity concept as well. So basically it says, that you must record the transactions of the business separately from its owners. So owners and business are two separate entities. Do not mix with their transactions. Record their transactions separately. And you must follow this accounting principle even if the business is not a company. So even if business is not a separate legal entity, which is a company, you must follow this. Do not mix up the personal transactions of the owner with the transactions of your business. If owner takes something away from the business, record it as drawings. And if you remember the definition of drawing, which we did in accounting short number two, 
drawing is the money which is withdrawn by the owner of the business from the business. So never mix up with the transactions of owner and the business, record them separately. And that's known as business entity concept. The next one is a materiality concept. Now materiality concept basically says that you only record the transactions in accounts when they are material enough to change the decision of the decision makers. So do not record it if the reader of the accounts do not change their decisions or will not change their decisions because of that particular transaction. So if it's a very small size transaction, it's fine, do not record it. Transactions must only be uh, recorded when they are material enough or they comprehensively represent the financial results, financial performance and the financial position or the cash flows of the business. That's the materiality concept. Prudence. Prudence basically, uh, the English dictionary meaning of the word prudence is being cautious. Now prudence means in accounts, do not record any profits unless they are recognized. So profits will not recognize until you have made the sales and it's completed. You have to be cautious. It might be that those profits will never be realized. So do not account for them now. Whereas if you come to know about any losses, account for them now so that you are prepared. It doesn't come to you as a shock. So do not account for any profits unless the sale has been completed but account for all the losses as soon as you become aware of it. And that's prudence. Double entry concept. I touched on it when we were talking in accounting short number three. So a double entry concept basically means that for uh, when, um, when we were talking about trial balance actually. So double entry concept basically means that when you record any transaction in accounts, you will record it at two in two different accounts. So for each and every debit, there will be an equal and opposite credit. So each transaction will be recorded twice in your accounts, two entries for each and every transaction. And that's why we said that trial balance should always balance. If it doesn't balance, you need to go back and check for the errors. That's double entry concept. Then you have money measurement concept. When you talk about money measurement concept, accountants, they do not account for items unless they can be quantified in monetary terms. So unless you can attach up money value to your transactions, you should not or you cannot record them in your books of accounts. So there are items like, for example, the skills of the workforce, the quality of the management, brand recognition, uh, market leadership, you cannot record these items, although these items are so important for the business, but you cannot record it because you cannot attach a monetary value to it. So unless there is a monetary value which can be attached to your transactions, do not record it. Consistency concept. Once you start uh, recording something using, a, using one principle of accounts, or one method of accounting. So as we progress, you will know that for certain things, there are so many methods of accounting. So we will have a choice. But once you start recording that transaction with one method of accounting, you should continue doing it with the same method. You can't choose, you can't always change. This ensures that your financial statements can be compared over the period of time. So do not change your accounting methods. You cannot change them. And that's it for today. Um, there are a few more things which I need to discuss before we can start doing debits and credits. So possibly in my next shot, we are going to cover you know, those things which cannot be covered in this uh, short. 
and then I will start with debit and credit as well. So the next one will be on Monday in which we will do the remaining concepts. It's only few remaining. Plus we will start with how, what is debit, what is credit. Thank you very much. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Namaste.